गुड मॉर्निंग फ्रेंड्स द नेक्स्ट टॉपिक दैट वी डिस्कस इन दिस सेक्शन इज दिस इज द कंसेप्ट ऑफ रेशो एंड प्रोपोर्शन वी हैव अ थ्री पार्ट्स इन दिस टॉपिक रेशो प्रोपोर्शन आल्सो वी हैव द कंसेप्ट ऑफ वेरिएशन वी टेक वन बाय वन इट्स अ वेरी एलिमेंट्री टॉपिक व्हेन वी स्टार्ट विद द टर्म रेशो सपोज टू नंबर्स आर गिवन ए एंड Value of A is 20 and value of B is 10. Two numbers are given. That's their absolute values. A is 20 and B is 10. If I have to find the ratio of A and B, so what I will do? I will cancel out what I can cancel. From here I can say the ratio of A and B is said to be two ratio one. Right? The first thing that we have to understand ratio is always taken in the simple form. Simple form means Whatever can be cancellation, whatever can be cancelled out, we cancel from both sides. Twenty ratio ten, ten will be cancelled out. I can say that is two ratio one. Now, the point to understand is suppose if ratio is given, two ratio one. If I ask you, can you find the number? No. Why? Because only the ratios are given two ratio one. My number can be two and one. They can be four and two. They can be twenty and ten. They can be hundred and fifty. They can be two hundred and hundred. Means when ratio is given, we cannot find the number. It means for when the ratio is given, for getting the numbers, we need some additional condition. Suppose I say the ratio of two numbers is two ratio one, and sum of the numbers is one fifty, and sum of the numbers is one fifty. We have to find the numbers. The question is, we have to find the numbers. Now, what I can say now? Ratio is two ratio one. So I can say if first number is two x, the second would be x. Sum is equal to one fifty. Three x equal to one fifty. X would be equal to fifty. If x is fifty, my first number is hundred, and the second number is fifty. It becomes my answer, right? So the simple means that whenever the ratio is given, we can assume our number into the absolute values two x and x, and I can solve it. Sometimes in order to solve it faster, we generally take if this is two, this is one. We make the sum three. So I can say sum is given. Three would be same as two, one fifty, right? It means when three is similar to one fifty, it means one is equal to fifty, right? So this becomes hundred and this becomes fifty. Okay. It is given that. The ratio of three numbers is given a ratio, b ratio, c, one ratio, two ratio, three. The three numbers are given a, b, c, and the ratio is one ratio, two ratio, three. It is given that the difference in squares of c and b is the difference in squares of c and b is one eighty. We have to find the sum of numbers. Question is the difference in the square of C and B is 180. We have to find the sum of the numbers. How we can answer it? I will assume my first number to be x, a, b will be 2x and c would be 3x. The difference between the square of C and B it means 9x square minus 4x square equal to 180. I can say 5x square equal to 180. X square equal to 36. Or x is equal to six. What I can see now here, five x square equal to one eighty, x square equal to thirty six, x is equal to six. If x is six, so I can say my first number will be six, second number is twelve, third number is eighteen. So I can say sum of the numbers is equal to thirty six. That becomes my answer. What we can say, if x is equal to six, so I can say this number is six, this is twelve, this is eighteen. So my total sum is equal to thirty six. Now in this problem, because it is not based on the linear, here it is the linear. Either sum is given, difference is given, but when square is given, cube is given, product is given, it becomes a quadratic or cubic. So in these type of questions, I can go by this approach that I applied here. Suppose if I say one square is one, a uh, two square is four, three square is nine, and the difference between them is five. That is equal to 180. Here I can say 1 will be equal to 36. That makes my question wrong, right? So 
what you have to take care of, you have to remember that in case when the question is given in the terms of square of cubes, in that case assume in the terms of x, so I can say x, 2x and 3x, solve it, find x and answer your question. So you can say the sum of the numbers is equal to 36. Now we solve some of the elementary questions which are based on the concept of ratio. We can start it one by one. It is given that in an 80 liter solution of milk and water, ratio of milk and water is 2 ratio 3. Right? Question is how much milk should be added? How much milk should be added? So that the ratio of milk is to water becomes 4 ratio 1. Pay attention here what I stated you. You have 80 litre solution of milk and water. In this ratio of milk and water is 2 ratio 3. Question is how much milk should be added so that it becomes 4 ratio 1. So what I can say, total is 80, milk and water ratio is 2 ratio 3. So I can say milk is equal to 80 into 2 upon 5 that is the process to solve it. That is 32 and the water is equal to 42. Right? Now question is how much milk should be added. So I have to add the milk in this. It means earlier my milk was 32. I will add x liter milk in it. My value of the water will remain the same. And the ratio becomes 4 ratio 1. Pay attention to what we have done. Total was 80. And milk ratio water is 2 ratio 3. So I can say milk is 80 into 2 upon 5. That is 32. And water is 48. Now milk is 32 and water is 48. It is given that milk should be added. So I mean if milk is added. So I will add milk inside it. 32 plus x upon 48, I have to find out x, cross multiply, 32 plus x equal to 192 and x is equal to 160. Now the answer is 160 liter of milk should be added so that the ratio becomes 4 ratio 1. In the same question, if I just change it in this way, in such a way that in a 80 litre solution of milk and water, ratio of milk and water is 2 ratio 3. Now the question is, how much water should be added? How much water should be added? So that the ratio of water, the ratio of milk is to water becomes 1 ratio 4. Pay attention here what I stated you. Up to this line it is same. The question is how much water should be added so that the ratio of milk and water is 1 ratio 4. How we can answer it? First step will remain the same. Milk is 32 and water is 48. Now in this question it, how much water should be added? So I will say x liter is added and my ratio become 1 ratio 4. I have to find the value of x. Just cross multiply. 128 equal to 48 plus x or I can say x is equal to 80 liters that becomes my answer. So I can say 80 liter of water should be added so that the ratio becomes milk is to water now 1 ratio 4. Right? Means in the terms of ratio we have to always take care of this is milk and this is water, this is milk and this is water. I can just solve it and my answer is there. The second type problem is, suppose it is given that two positive numbers, two positive numbers are in ratio of 5 ratio 6, if 16 is subtracted from these two numbers, 16 is subtracted from these two numbers, 
the new ratio of the number becomes the new ratio of number becomes 3 ratio 4 we have to find the numbers right now when i say the ratio was earlier 5 ratio 6 so i can assume my number to be 5x and 6x right now these are the absolute numbers i have to subtract 16 from these two numbers so i will subtract 16 here also 16 here the new ratio become 3 ratio 4 now these type of questions are very simple suppose in place of 16 if something has to be added so i can also go with the same way in the place of subtraction i will just make an addition now i can find the value of x cross multiply 20x minus 64 equal to 18x minus 48 this would be 2x equal to 64 minus 48 that will be 16 i can say x is equal to 8 when x is equal to 8 so i can say my original solution was it was 8 into 5 8 into 5 40 and this is 48 so these are my numbers in the starting which what you are expected to do assume it at 5x and 6x then as per to the given instruction 16 has to be subtracted subtract 16 here subtract 16 here and just find out for x once you have the value of x so you can say if this number is 40 and this number is 48 that becomes your answer Ratio of income and expenditure is 5 ratio 3. Ratio of income and expenditure of a person is 5 ratio 3. It is given that in next year income increases by 20%. If 
each person sales rupees is 500 if each person sales rupees is 500 we have to find out what was their incomes what was their incomes the question is if each person save rupees 500 we have to find out what was their incomes now what the point that i want to explain you in this question suppose two different ratios are given incomes as an expenditure when i assume the absolute values so we have to take the variable to be different constant to be different this is 2x and this is 3x here i will take 3y and 5y i cannot take this both in x if first thing i am taking in x the second i will take in y so that will stay you 2x minus 3y this is my saving in the first year 500 of the first person for second person 3x minus 5y is equal to 500 because this is the income and this is the expenditure so I have to subtract expenditure from the income income of the first person is 200 uh, 2x and that is 3y now I have to solve it for x and y I have two equations multiply first equation by 3 6x minus 9y equals to 1500 multiplied by 2 2x minus 10y equal to 1000 I will subtract minus plus minus this would be cancelled out y equal to 500 that is the value of y by putting y in this equation i can find out x so i can say x equals to 2000 x will be equal to 1000 so now i, now I can say if i have to find the incomes of the persons that would be 2000 and 3000 and if i have to find their expenditures that would be 1500 and 2500 that becomes my answer right so these are some standard questions which are based on the concept of ratio. Now after this we are going to understand the second part of this that deals with equality of two ratios. Equality of ratios yeah, equality of numbers. Suppose if I say 2a equal to 3b equal to 5c. And I have to find the ratio of A ratio B ratio C. What is given to us? 2A equal to 3B equal to 5C. I have to find A ratio B ratio C. Right? Here I cannot say A ratio B ratio C is 2 ratio 3 ratio 5. That will be wrong. If I have to answer it, I will take this to be equal to 1. So 2A is 1. A would be 1 by 2. This will be 1 by 3. And this will be 1 by 5. LCM is 30, so I can take it as 15 is to 10 ratio 6, so my answer is 15 ratio 10 ratio 6. Or one shortcut approach to this is, whatever these numbers are given, take the LCM of this, that would be 30. 30 by 2 will give you 15, 30 by 3 will give you 10 and 30 by 5 will give you 6. You can say the ratio will be 15 ratio 10 ratio 6. We have four types of standard ratios. Suppose our original ratio is given as A ratio B. Suppose our original ratio is given as A ratio B. Right? Now based on that, we have four types of ratios. First one is duplicate ratio. Second one is triplicate ratio. Next is subduplicate ratio and next one is subtriplicate ratio. Duplicate ratio is square of this. So we can say a square is to b square. Suppose our original ratio is a ratio b and we have to find the duplicate ratio. So I can say that is a square is to b square. Triplicate is cube of this. Our answer is a cube is to b cube. Some duplicate is and root of this a raised to power 1 by 2 is to b raised to power 1 by 2 and some triplicate is a raised to power 1 by 3 is to b raised to power 1 by 3. Question is if original ratio was a ratio b, duplicate ratio was a square is to b square, triplicate ratio is a cube is to b cube, 
sub duplicate ratio is a raised to power 1 by 2 is to b raised to power 1 by 2 and sub triplicate ratio is a raised to power 1 by 3 is to b raised to power 1 by 3. Suppose if I say you a question, it is given that sub duplicate ratio of two numbers is 2 ratio 3. We have to find the triplicate ratio of the numbers. It is given that sub duplicate ratio is 2 ratio 3. We have to find the triplicate ratio of the numbers. So what I can say, suppose my numbers ratio is A ratio B. Sub duplicate is given means root A upon root B is given this is equal to 2 by 3. Making square both sides. So I can say A by B becomes equal to 4 by 9. I have to find the triplicate ratio means I have to make the cube. So I can say this as A cube upon B cube is equal to 4 upon 9 whole cube. This is equal to 64 upon 729. So we can say triplicate ratio is equal to 64 of ratio 729. That becomes our answer. What is given to us? Sub duplicate is 2 ratio 3. I have to find the triplicate. I know that if ratio is A ratio B, this is the sub duplicate ratio. That is A by B becomes 4 ratio 9. And I have to find the triplicate ratio. I have to make the cube. So that would be a cube is to b cube, that is 4 over 9 cube and my answer is 64 upon 79, that becomes my answer. The fourth concept in this is concept of joint ratio. This is very important concept because this concept has an application also in the terms of questions based on races and games that we also study in time, speed and distance as well as some questions we also do here. First we start with the concept of joint ratio. For example, if A ratio B is given 2 ratio 3, B ratio C is given 4 ratio 3. I have to find the ratio of A ratio B ratio C. Question is A ratio B is given 2 ratio 3, B ratio C is given 4 ratio 3. I have to find the joint ratio of A ratio B ratio C. Right? Now if I have to answer this question, means I have to combine these two. How I can combine? For making both combined, we have to make common terms to be equal. Means I have to make this B to be equal. Here B is 3 and here B is 4. I want to make both equal. I will multiply this by 4 that becomes 12. If I multiply this by 3 it becomes 12. So what I can say if I multiply this by 4 it becomes 8 is to 12. If I multiply this by 3 that would be 9. So I can say ratio of A ratio B ratio C is 8 ratio 12 ratio 9. What is given to us? A ratio B is given 2 ratio 3. B ratio C is given 4 ratio 3. I have to find the combined ratio of A ratio B ratio C. How I can answer it? I will make these two terms to be same. This is 3 and this is 4. It means if I multiply this by 4, this becomes 8 ratio 12. If I multiply this by 3, that becomes 12 ratio 9. So my answer would be 8 ratio 12 ratio 9. Answer one more statement. A ratio B is 5 ratio 2, B ratio C is 2 ratio 3, C ratio D is 5 ratio 3. What is given to us? A ratio B is 5 ratio 2, B ratio C is 2 ratio 3 and C ratio D is 5 ratio 3. We have to answer what is the joint ratio of A ratio B ratio C ratio now when I have to find A ratio B ratio C, here by chance these two are equal, I can simply say A ratio B ratio C is 5 ratio 2 ratio 3. Now I have to combine this with C ratio D, it is 3, it is 5. For making both equal, I have to multiply this by 5 and this by 3, so I can say this would be 25 ratio 10 ratio 15 and multiply this by 3, 15 is equal that would be 9. So my answer would be 
25 ratio, 10 ratio, 15 ratio, 9, that becomes my answer. What we have done? It is given that A ratio B, 5 ratio 2, B ratio C, 2 ratio 3. Because these two are equal, so I can say A ratio B ratio C is 5 ratio 2 ratio 3. After this, this C ratio D is 5 ratio 3. It means this is 3 and this is 5. First of all, I have to make them equal. So what I can say? I can multiply this number by 5. That becomes 25 ratio, 10 ratio 15. And here multiply this by 3. 15 ratio 9 answer is 25 ratio, 10 ratio 15 ratio 9. Now one important point here is to understand is, suppose I need A ratio D. Suppose the question is we have to find out A ratio D. It means just take this, 25 is to 9. That becomes your answer. Means you have A ratio, B ratio, C ratio, D that is 25 ratio, 10 ratio, 15 ratio, 9 and now if you have to find either B ratio, D answer is 10 ratio, 9 or you have to find A ratio, D you can say your answer is said to be 15 ratio, 9 that becomes your answer. 